Hey, it's Pony, and I'm back like a vertebrae. No? I thought it was funny. And I'm back to regale you with more verbal collisions from the car accident that is online dating. Yes, I am using driving as a metaphor for online dating. And you're driving, and you're minding your business, and then wham! Some guy is writing to you about the length of his penis. Just, just, just stop. Let's start with a message from this clever gentleman. He writes, Hey baby, you want to come to my house and work on your math skills? Math skills. Like we're doing homework? Okay, either this guy is in high school, or he is setting up a really bad joke. We can add the bed, subtract the clothes, divide the legs, and multiply. Oh, there it is. Oh, he's so clever. Can I get that printed on a valentine? Perhaps instead of math, we can work on our history skills. Like, you wrote, and I didn't respond, and that's done, and that makes you history. Numbers also play a factor in this next message. When this gentleman writes expressing his disbelief at my age, he says, with a body like that, you can't be 31. What does a 31 year old body look like? What, what is he thinking, like Tales from the Crypt? Like the Crypt Keeper, is that what he's expecting? No, no, the Crypt Keeper was like 40, at least. To which I responded, with a beer pong picture like that, you must be 24, which he was. And yes, he was playing beer pong in his profile picture, which has relationship material written all over it. This next gentleman really knows how to sell himself. He paints a vivid picture when he says, what you doing right now, baby? Hit me up. I just became single eight days ago after 17 years of marriage. I am ready to go, baby. Baby, hit me up. I am ready to go, baby. I'm pretty sure those are lyrics from a Britney Spears song. It sounds like it. Did he plagiarize this from her? Wow. Dude, you know how to give a girl butterflies, like, until she gags. That is my dream, is to meet a guy who was just in a relationship for 20 years, and then almost a week later is writing me messages where he repeatedly addresses me as baby. It's like a fairy tale. Our next gentleman uses a no-nonsense approach when he says, let's get to the point. Wanna fuck? Well, so much for foreplay. You know, the worst part isn't even the vulgarity of the message. The worst part is that you're cheap. Because if you just want sex with a stranger right away who you have no intention of getting to know, they have professionals for that. And we have them all over Las Vegas. So go find a pro and leave me alone. Our next gentleman is also a straight shooter. He writes, I want to put my dick inside you. Again, no foreplay. How would he feel if I sent him a message and said, hey, I want to stick a cucumber inside of you? Would that be enticing? Because that's on a similar level. You're writing to women that you've never met, and you're saying, I want to invade your body. Why does he find that a reasonable approach? Sir, I do not know you. Keep your cucumber to yourself. But some of the messages I get aren't vulgar at all. Sometimes I get invited out to fine restaurants. For example, this gentleman's offer, I'd love to buy you a nice meal at the Costco food court. I mean, I can understand being on a budget, but taking a first date to a place where you can buy toilet paper in bulk quantities, it just seems like bad form to me. I received a similar message from this guy who says, so you like In-N-Out Burger or what? In-N-Out Burger. Is that a sexual innuendo? Or is he really talking about cheeseburgers? Because I feel like I'm missing something here. In and out burger, I'll go put on my new dress. Lastly, I give you a riddle because that's how this gentleman approached me. He writes, so there's a train leaving the station at 710 going east at 60 miles per hour. Oh God, it's like the math guy is back again. Like we're back in school doing an equation or like he's setting up a really bad joke. At 7.30, another train leaves the station eight miles away going west at 50 miles an hour. If the wind is blowing north, how long would it take you to sit on my face? Okay, so there's a lot to remember here. So the one train is going east and the other train is eight miles away and the wind is blowing north, so... Oh, he just wanted to get to the sit on my face part. I get it. That's really funny. 
You know, if you had just written me a message asking me to sit on your face, I would have been offended. But since you dressed it up in a clever riddle, well, now I'm interested. That's all for this installment of my romantic online life. I hope that none of this is happening to you. But if it is, feel free to share your stories in the comments. I'll see you next time.